Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to ex express my pleasure and privilege to have this opportunity to be with you today. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the US late invasion to Iraq, which was seen by many Iraqis as a chance for democratic future. However, in reality, the past two decades has been far from <clears throat> this hoped for ideal. On paper, Iraq has all the <coughs> sorry, trappings of functioning democracy with six elections and subsequent transfer of power. Unfortunately, most Iraqis use election as a mechanism for reinforcing the same class of political elites who were looking for their own interests and narrowing group benefits. With successive governments and their international backers falling to build a coherent and accountable state due to the lack of planning and mismanagement, the strong ties of the old guards and godfathers of the post-2003 political powers with foreign countries' interests prevented the government from building a full-functioning state but to create their own internal authorities within the government, financing themselves through corruption. The only way to retrieve the Iraqi social well-being and the hoped ideal is to allow and enable for second generation of leadership to build and the state and to guide the third generation, I mean the youth, into state management level. Neutral balance in regional and international community based on mutual benefits will help Iraq to play a positive role in the stabilization of itself that plays an important role in stabilization the region. Iraq enjoy relative peace and security today. The regional strategic environment remain complex, unstable, and unpredictable. Political, ethnic, economic, social, and environmental strains continue to be a challenge and may cause unrest. However, given the relative bees, Iraq has seen to have played an integral role in initiating the dialogue between neighbors, which led to Saudi-Iranian deal. Additionally, strengthening the Iraqi military abilities, arming the Iraqi security forces, and localize some of defense industry will be essential for the regional security for all countries in the area by defeating terrorist organization and out of law militias. The key subject to be discussed all the time is the economy. The economic integration based on win-win situation to get the best use of human and natural resources of Iraq. Iraq has a population exceeding 40 million persons with 60% under the age of 40 and 40% under the age of 25. The major oil international player will give opportunity to international support to stabilize the energy market as well as the stability of international energy supply, we have already started the fifth round of natural gas extraction, which will add a significant amount of gas to the international market. The Iraqi government at the moment is not in an easy position, having to balance the safety of its citizens and the in integrity of the country while maintaining good relation with its neighbors and allies. At a time when a major regional war is being conducting in Eastern Europe with significant risk to split over. I would consider this government is the last chance to build the ideal model of democracy in the Middle East that the American administration used this as an excuse for their invasion to Iraq 20 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your listening and we will continue the discussion over the panel. Thank you very much.
course, our friends and partners like Qatar could help us a lot, including the... Thank you, Mohamed um, Aldaraji, uh, for those very good comments. So one of the reasons we're having this discussion today is on March 19th, uh, the U.S. air war began in Iraq, and on March 20th, the U.S. air war, uh, ground war began in Iraq 20 years ago. Where were you on March 19th, and what was your reaction? To be honest, I was uh, on a construction site in London, uh, used as uh, a project manager, and uh, when I uh, heard this, I was sing and dance uh, because I experienced the oppression of Saddam's regime and most of my family from the Arab Marsh has been executed by uh, his uh, uh, savage regime. And what's your reaction today, now that we're 20 years later? To be honest, I review all these thoughts and I think uh, it wasn't the ideal model that I was expecting uh, from changing the regime and following the democratic process uh, due to uh, mistakes has been done by the CPA, uh, coalition forces and uh, successive Iraqi governments, which couldn't stabilize the country economically and uh, as well as the security wise. Is Iraq today a failed state? I mean, we're trying to survive. If you look at the uh, state, full state functioning, yes it is. But trying, especially with this government, trying to uh, retrieve as much as we can from the uh, uh, state, uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, states built institutes to uh, start a real economy, a real security, to give a well-being for our uh, citizens. After the U.S. invasion, who, the, the U.S. Army has issued an official history of the Iraq war. The conclusion of, the, of that history is that Iran won the war. Is that correct? Is it the war between America and Iran? If it's the war between America and Iran, why they use Iraq as a battlefield? So this, uh, uh, th this statement from the American uh, army uh, is not appropriate and it's this undermining the Iraqi position. We are not a battlefield for uh, uh, the, the, the war between Iran and America. Of course, if Iran and America are making a deal, it will the most beneficial country is Iraq because we are suffering from their differences and they try to use us as a battlefield. Do you, you mentioned the, in your opening remarks this new deal that China has brokered between Iran and Saudi Arabia. What do you think, what, how important is that deal? What, what, what effects will it have? Will it, you know, the war in Yemen has been a proxy war between the Saudis and the Iranians, and there's a cold war in Lebanon, there's been a sort of some form of conflict in Iraq. Do you think this will reduce regional um, tensions, and what does it say about the role of China? Is the role is the United States sort of now no longer the key power in the region? I think the region uh, down uh, in ranking in uh, American priority list, and of course, the uh, uh, Iranian Saudi deal will give the most benefits for uh, Iraq, and. Iraq already starting the opening the dialogue between these two countries and then the Chinese uh, jump into the conclusion and they take the uh, piece of cake end of the day. But uh, uh, nevertheless, Iraq will get the uh, most benefit of this deal because the stabilization of the region will lead uh, to stabilize the Iraq and uh, the Iraqi economy will be uh, developed. Just going back to, so also this week, March 16th is the 35th anniversary of Saddam gassing the Kurds in, in Alabja with poison gas. Knowing all we know now, today, was getting rid of Saddam worth it for Iraqis? 
This is a question I've been asked last week in Erbil when I was in BBC uh, World Question. And I've been asked this question from the a Kurdish chap, a young man. Uh, maybe his family was under this uh, 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 criminal offense. Unfortunately, our population is young. So they start forgetting what Saddam's regime did for Iraqi people. They uh, gassed the uh, Kurds in the north. They uh, killed hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, Shia in the uh, uh, south. And it, it was in, in, in the same time in 1991. It was a Shia uprising in the south of Iraq. And at least 250 uh, thousand person has been killed in 1991 uh, after the uh, uh, the war. So the criminal regime killed a lot of Iraqis, but unfortunately, it has been forgotten now. The people, the young people, want to see a repost state, a state. Uh, built on, uh, based on uh, institutions, not on political parties, and they want services, they want uh, economy. What we get from the uh, democracy is just election and some uh, freedom in, uh, in media coverage, which is not the uh, main principles of democracy. Democracy wants to put the right person in the right place. Democracy means uh, you've got all your rights, the democracy I mean you got right of job and uh, to live in a, a good way. Yeah, so are you saying it wasn't worth it or are you saying it was worth it? I have to admit it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Because we need to review all these 20 years the American said we lost the war. What benefits Iraqs get? We struggled to build a good relation with our Arab neighbors. We struggle to build an economy. So uh, is it worth in your point of view or any of the audience point of view to uh, destroy the country? One million person has been killed and Iraq being a hub for the uh, uh, goods exported from other countries. Our industry is uh, uh, zero now. Uh, our agriculture is not in a, a good uh, uh, situation. So we paid a price. Don't forget the, our, our fight against ISIS. We fought ISIS on behalf of the whole world. We fight ISIS on behalf of the whole region, and we paid a severe price for defeating uh, ISIS. Yes, we get some help from West and East, but still a limited help, but we train our military and financial resources for uh, two years. Third of Iraq has been out of control for two years, and Iraqi people from Mosul and Ambar and Salah Din suffered from the invasion of uh, Daesh, while the, uh, most of the international community was uh, looking at what's going on in Iraq without doing anything except United States of America and some allies, and Iran helped Iraq as well uh, uh, to defeat uh, Daesh or ISIS. So uh, I think Iraqi people paid enough a price for this. We need to have a new start. We need to play the natural role of uh, Iraq uh, within the region and to stabilize the security of the region. How much influence does Iran have in Iraqi politics? Yes, it has some influences. America has some influences as well. Some Arab countries have influences. When the system being weak, everybody uh, try to uh, use their influence. Where there is a vacuum, somebody wants to uh, uh, fill uh, this vacuum. Therefore, we need uh, internal cohesion. We need uh, integration between our uh, society 
to build a proper political system. If we need to change the constitution, we have to change it. If we need to change the political system in a better way, we have to do it. Uh, our constitution has been written under uh, the uh, occupation and wasn't uh, freely written. We need to rewrite it. Iraq is not just this area of land. Iraq is a history. Iraq is a, a geopolitics of the whole region. Iraq has the third reserve of oil, and I think it's second in gas, uh, despite the associated gas, especially the energy market will rely on gas more and more. We're here in Qatar, and um, you know, if you're, you're saying that Iraq has the second largest reserves of gas and the third largest reserves of oil, Iraq should be a very rich country, right? Which is. But, but corruption is the main problem you have. Exactly. Why and how and how to solve it? Iraq experience a two decades of lack of planning and mismanagement. The corruption is a result of the political system. A very loose political system, no accountability, uh, many political parties based on ethnic and uh, uh, sectarian ideologies. When we built authorities and not building state institutions, you will experience corruption. So the anti-corruption measures should start from the bottom up to the top. I think some of the godfathers, or what we call, we call them the old guards of the political uh, process post-2003, they built their empires on the corruption from being in the, in the government. And they have a pre-2003 uh, commitment with external or foreigner countries they cannot free themselves from these commitments. So we need a new generation who believes in cross-sectarian political system with full of integrity and putting the right person in the right place. I think this government starting a very uh, positive uh, steps I'm not saying that because I'm advisor for the prime minister. I'm saying that because it's reality. They took some serious steps. I don't know if they allow the new prime minister to complete his job or not. Of course, it will, uh, uh, he or he will uh, be uh, uh, oppositioned by some uh, people who will lose their interest and uh, they will lose their uh, benefits. You mentioned these sectarian and ethnic parties, all, many of them have their own militias, right? Yes. Um, to what extent is Iraqi politics then controlled by these militias, whether they're Shia back, whether they're Shia or Kurdish or choose your... Yes, most of the political uh, parties, they armed the political uh, process. Even in the election, we experienced... So, so it's a bit like Hezbollah in Lebanon, where there's a political party and an armed wing of the party. Yeah, in a uh, way or another, there is, there is some similarity. But the difference is that uh, they don't represent more than 20% of Iraqi population. And this uh, number, why I say 20? Because uh, the uh, participation in election it's only 20%. Per, uh, that means the other 80%, they don't belong to these parties uh, or armed parties. So we have uh, an opportunity to uh, create a new era of political life in Iraq by using this silent 80% of Iraqi population, push them, encourage them to participate in an election, to elect the people who hasn't got any uh, militia backing them. 
And you mentioned in your remarks that Iraq is a very young country, so you've got a um, very large part of the population who don't even remember Saddam. Yes. Who, who don't. So this is a this is a good thing uh, that they're kind of free of the past, or is a bad thing? I think Saddam's a history now. Yeah. In the past, we don't have to keep remember his era. We have to look at the future. We want a new Iraq who give the best service to his people, to get a good economy, strengthen our uh, security forces, try to build a uh, an, uh, mutual benefit uh, relation with our neighbors, all neighbors, with the international community and with the region. Iraq must play his historical and geopolitical roles within the uh, region. So the United States overthrew Iraq, overthrew Saddam. What is the view of the United States today in Iraq? Unfortunately, as far as I know or my analysis, they dropped the uh, Iraq from the top of their priority list up, uh, down to the bottom, which is uh, it's not expected from a country like United States. They have other priorities. They have priority in China, in Far East, Russian-Ukrainian conflict. So uh, they create some, some vacuum in power and influence in Iraq. This vacuum naturally will be filled by others. Like? Any other countries who would like to have some interest from Iraq. Iran, Arab countries, Turkey, uh, European countries, any. But yeah. we have to build a vacuum. We are not able yet to build a political system that uh, fill this vacuum. There are 2,500 American troops still in Iraq. What are they doing? And if they, if they left, would it make a difference? I don't think they will make any difference if they left, because uh, Iraq experienced some relative peace and uh, security now. And I think people from, a lot of people from Qatar visit Basra, and so this is the uh, football tournament. And they uh, experienced the uh, security and uh, I think we need a cooperation in training, especially in cybersecurity, in intelligence service. We need cooperation with the American for some air defense, anti-drones. Uh, we need some uh, technology transfer to build our own uh, uh, defense system. We need some uh, experienced people in management, planning. We would love as many as Americans like you walking in Iraqi streets in their suits. We don't need uh, American soldiers uh, in their armed vehicles in Iraq because they no need for them at the moment. We need social, cultural, economical uh, relation with America and with any other countries who can uh, or who believe in the new Iraq. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mohammed al Daraji. Thank you for your comments and thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much.